Welcome back, everybody, to our basic, quick, brief, really fast <laughs> wireless class. All right, let me fix my mic here. I got it all the way down. All right, so yeah, I mean, uh, wireless for CCNA, there is no wireless anymore. Cisco created their own Cisco Unified Wireless uh, certification. All right, which I'll shortly be putting up. All right, I'm just almost done with it. But for basic wireless, really, connectivity uh, in your home or very small office, you can you, know, you can get away with, uh, you know, something like this, let's say. Let's say this is a real estate office. And I always use that example because my wife, she's into real estate or was into real estate. Uh, dentist office, you know, basic, basic, basic stuff. Okay? You have normally three laptops or you can have... An actual, you know, desktop with a wireless net card, obviously. In this case, we're just using laptops. Now, you notice that the laptops are not connecting automatically to it. That's because their NIC cards are Ethernet NIC cards. So what we got to do is take this out and put the wireless NIC in and turn it back on. All right, let's minimize this. Oh, look, it connected automatically. And we'll find out the reason is that router is using default configurations. Therefore, it's going to connect automatically. And that's one of the dangers, really, of wireless uh, security, obviously. Uh, it doesn't come with it. You know, the 802.11, I speak on it in the class, that uh, it wasn't meant with security in mind, right? Uh, very, very pretty lame security uh, by default anyway. So you see it connects automatically, and this is the selling point of these, you know, of these routers that we purchase at the stores for our homes, even for businesses. Uh, you use very basic security, or some people do just leave everything at default and have no security at all. And if we were to look at the PCs, we'll take a look at the configuration. You see that it's getting its IP address 192.168.0.100. 01 is the gateway. All right, the next one, desktop. 0101 and so forth so the, the acp enabled so it's quick and easy it's a good selling point hey just plug this in and then plug the other the internet port to your modem or whoever is you're using for a provider and boom you're out okay so a, a lot of this is really unsecured so you gotta be very careful when doing it so how would you secure it so we get into this linksys router all right and there's many ways and again is there uh yeah did, did i maximize this to this fullest yes i did okay just looks kind of small here all right uh you can um this is very basic security you can do on here all right uh there's really only one thing that you can take it to the next level but then that's implementing a radius server and which i'll show you more or less a lab that i did i have it ready for you to so you can take a look at but that's for the actual ccna wireless course that i'm doing um Everything is DHCP. If you wanted to do it, you can put everything statically. All right, well, this is the internet. I'm sorry, part, this part right here. You can disable uh, DHCP, all right? And you can start doing addresses statically. And you can change the type of address scheme that you want. You don't have to have 192.168, right? You can have a 10.10 .10 or you can have uh, whatever, any private range. But change it from the default, obviously. So you can go ahead and do it. So... Let's change this just for giggles here. 172, and let's put 31, and let's go ahead and put in there 200, all right? And let's say and you could submit, and you can minimize the number, all right? You're going to be submitting, and you can go ahead and put in there, let's say, 240. That gives you 14 addresses for you to use. So definitely this number is going to change. You can give out a maximum of 15. You can only give out a maximum of 14. Or you can reduce it even further by saying, hey, you can only give out so much. So let's say 14. That's your maximum anyway. All right. And before you leave any pages, obviously, save your settings. All right. Save your settings. So now that's saved. So now we change the default IP address because what these uh, hackers do or uh, it's called war driving. All right. And then. They go ahead and they know the defaults of all the pretty much the wireless routers. I mean, you can Google it and get that information. So it's not a big deal. You see the IP address change over here. 
let's go ahead and do the same here all right it's, it's like a release renew uh cheating way <laughs> release renew there you go so now we got those uh within our new ip address now so that's one thing you can do you can actually set it up statically disable dacp and put in the ip addresses manually you can do that as well now it takes more work obviously because you got to go to each computer all right you have to set up uh, an ip address now you could do that on the pcs all right there's uh, and i'll show you on mine i got everything disabled on mine but i think i can show you uh go to my adapter settings let me go in here right here um here's my wi-fi go to properties i'm oh, just sharing okay if I actually have it enabled, let me see if I can. Let me enable it. I don't think that really mattered. Oh, honestly, I just looked at the wrong thing. Okay, TCP IP version 4, you go to properties, where you can have alternate configurations. So you can have it, let's say, statically. Uh, if your wallet is on two places, you have it statically for your work. And then, or you have a dynamic for your home. I'm sorry, you have a dynamic for your home. And when you go to work, you can have a user configured uh, portion of it where you can have everything statically assigned. So you can be part of two wireless network. One that's really, uh, you know, just your home network using basic security or at work where things are get a little bit more stricter. Okay. So that's what uh, you can do. One of the things you can do. This is one of the things that I used to do a uh, long time ago all right let me close that close that all right but again uh that's if you're doing things uh statically uh at your job site uh you can go ahead and do that i already have everything in the alternate configuration portion of it the dns the gateway all that where the normal the first tab everything is set to dynamic right you're getting it from your router all right so we change the ip address definitely that's something you want to do all right uh, dynamic DNS, as you can see here, we can't really get into it, uh, but you know, to concern with that. Wireless, we go, or I'm sorry, wireless. Uh, here, definitely want to change the SSID. Don't leave the default SSID. Uh, let's put everything in caps here. Uh, let, what do we call this? Let's call this. Um, every time I think of a name, I can't, I can't even think of it. All right, let's just call it Cisco for, wow, no originality there. All right, Cisco, you can also change it if you want it to run only certain uh, frequencies, right? You want to be in N, not frequencies, I'm sorry, channels. You want to be in N, you can be in G, all right, you can be in B. Uh, if you have it in mixed mode, just know that you will run slower, all right? You'll run at the slower speeds. So you can put it in whatever one you want. So I'm just going to leave it in mixed mode right now, all right? And then you can choose a different channel, right? Now we're in mixed mode, and we do have 802.11b or G, all right, or G or N, let's say. Uh, you're going to have three non-overlapping channels, one, three, and six. So you can go ahead and say choose six, okay, just because, whatever. So, yeah, you can choose the channel you want. All right, and again, you would save settings. Now, if you're doing this wirelessly, if you're configuring everything wirelessly, you are going to lose connectivity. So, as you can see. All right, so what you got to do now, you got to go to your clients. Now, obviously, you never configure a wireless, uh, wireless. You would do it wired. All right, and in the configurations under wireless, we have to put the name of the SSID, which is an all in caps, and we use Cisco. Okay, and I don't think this has a channel. Was it? No, I don't think so. Let me see if I can go here. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I don't think so. And then we're good. I think that should be it. Okay, I'll just minimize this. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. So, I guess it picked up the channel automatically. All right. And then we go to config, wireless. Put in the SSID. That's the only thing uh, that's kind of messed up. You have to actually, you know, if you have 300 clients and you're doing things, you know, you got to change your SSID. Wow. 
Okay, that's a lot of work, but hey, we must do what we must do for security purposes. <laughs> All right, and then, uh, not there. What am I going there for? All right, we're going to go to wireless, and then we go to Cisco, or we type in Cisco, I should say. And then a little line should come back, boom, and we're connected again. All right, now it's up to you if you want to broadcast it. All right, that's fine. You can see it and you can connect to it. All right, or you can disable it and then you have to type it in manually. All right, again, packet tracer. All right, now the next is water security. Here's where we start running into a little bit better security. We have web, definitely, it's not secure whatsoever. Okay, WPA improved on it. And then we came out with WPA2. Now there's two flavors of WPA2, or really three flavors of WPA, but two flavors of WPA2. Now you have WPA2 Personal and WPA2 Enterprise, and WPA Personal and WPA Enterprise. All right, and really the personal is just you, WPA2, obviously. Type of encryption, AES, you don't want to use TKIP. All right, and then you put in some sort of password. All right, WPA2 personal, some network identification key, right, uh, requiring authentication. So we can put in here, we put Cisco, right? So let's just put a CCIE in there and let's save it. Hopefully it'll take it. Minimum, main characters, obviously. CCIE. Times three. All right, let's do that. That's right, two, four, six, I need more. Okay, we're not going to use that. Spartacus, there we go. I like the movie, what can I say? All right, Spartacus. So, once again, we lost connectivity. Why? Because we don't have the password. We're not using, so we go WPA2. All right, oh, not that one, pre-share key. WPA2, pre-share key. All right. And then we go ahead and put in, uh, what was it, Spartacus? Spartacus, right? That should be it. Let's minimize that. There you go. You got connection again. So you see, this stuff is very easy uh, to do. You just got to go step by step. And, I mean, don't get too crazy with the uh, security portion of it because, you know, you don't want to lock yourself out. And be very careful. I've been into certain offices where even – your antivirus or firewalls they have set up on there will go ahead and actually block your wireless. So you got to allow certain ports and things like that. So be careful when you're doing this. I mean, I've run into certain antiviruses that do that. Uh, Spartacus. Come on. There you go. Why does it keep going back down? I don't know. All right. Never mind. Config wireless pre shared key Spartacus. All right, and again, this is not the most secure thing in the world, but hey, it's something. All right, so we got there again. Now, if you were to use Radius, which I'll show you in a little bit, uh, it'll be completely different. You would choose WPA personal uh, enterprise or WPA2 per uh, enterprise. All right, then that's your wide security. Definitely Mac filtering. You can only put, you will actually put permit PCs on the list. And then only those PCs that are on this list can actually connect to the actual wireless. Okay. And this actually lets you do it. Oh, they use, oh, got to enable it first. How about that? And then if you enable that, and I'm just going to, well, okay, I'll do it. Let me copy paste this. Control C. And we'll just put it in here. No, in the router. Hello. And it's got to be in that format that you saw. Two colon, you know, two, two values colon. Be careful because there's a decimal in there. I hope you can see that. I can barely see it on my screen. Whoops. Colon. One, two. Colon. One, two. Colon and delete that one there. And then you had a okay. I think I put a semicolon over here. 
going. Okay. You don't scream at me if I did something wrong. Calling. Then go to the next field. See if it took it. Okay. So we can go to the next computer. There's the MAC address. Copy. I'm believe me, I did this quite a bit. Uh, especially, you know, you have teenage kids. You want to make sure that you are... Uh, Secure, right? Your wireless, and you can your policies. You know what websites they can do, go to and stuff like that. You can do it through these routers. All right, and then we'll use the last one. All right, we'll copy that. Go back in. No, oh, look at that. You can do that. Backspace there, backspace there. My God, it's less, it's easier if you were, wow, they should have just left these things blank. All right, putting in the, all right, that was just three computers and I'm, I'm, I'm tired. All right, we clicked save and now you see now, oh, it disconnected and reconnected. So these are the only computers that should be able to connect. Now we should prove that, right? Because it says permit PCs listed below to access the wireless network. So there's only three MAC addresses on there. So if I were to bring out another PC, okay, and then I would actually turn it off, throw it out, put the Cisco thing in there, the wireless NIC card, Or, or Nick, so some people don't get all crazy because some people get, oh, he called it a Nick card. It's uh, The card is already in the abbreviation. Why is he doing that? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I find that hilarious. So the Mac filtering should work. Well, we can't connect. All right, but I know we can't connect because there's certain things we, well, it's not default. This is in caps Cisco, right? And then on top of that, we have a pre-shared key that was Spartacus. So even though we should have this, we should not still be able to connect because there's a Mac filter on there. So let's wait a while. Let's wait a while and see. Hmm. Okay, so not connecting. So our Mac filter is working because it's only permitting these PCs, right? So let's go ahead and let's get this. And this is the last one I'm doing because <laughs> this is really... Uh, okay, let's move this over here. All right, and there we go. Boom. And let's get rid of the. There we go. That's two. That's two. That's two. One, two. Oops. Not quotes now, colon, new form of hex numbers. All right, and let's go ahead and save these settings. Boom, not everybody connects. So my filtering is pretty cool. You can go ahead and use that. All right, and then there's advanced wireless settings. Now, if you really don't know what's going on, I suggest you leave this alone, okay? You know, isolation, all the frame bursts, and how fast the packets or frames are going, you know, uh, CTS uh, uh, controlled uh, to send and all this different stuff. So be careful. Be careful. With security, again, you can you know, turn on or disable or enable the firewalls, filter. All right. Access restrictions. This is where you do those policies. All right. I'm going to deny or allow from this time to this time, from this day to this day, from that time to that time. You can put in URLs, you can put in keywords. And you have here certain important numbers, and you can add to this block list. So, I mean, you can develop a web of it. One very important thing you need to do is definitely change the password of the router, you know, and don't do it to password one, capital P, P A S S W O R D one, capital P A S S W O R D one. That is not secure. 
Okay, so be very careful when doing that. Definitely, again, safe setting. So one is not that difficult. It's actually easier in the sense that um, you can do it yourself, right? Uh, it's not that much manpower needed. But I, it all depends on the type of wireless are you doing. Is it going to a huge topology? Is, you know, what type of wireless are you setting up? But anyway, so this is your basic wireless. And oh, let me show you. Oh, sorry about it. show you my desktop here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Here you go. This is the type of wireless that now Cisco you get into the Cisco wireless class where you have actual actually a radius server. So in the wireless router, you would actually go into wireless security, wireless, wireless security, and here you're choosing radius server. Now here we use WPA, something to do with a packet tracer. But you see now we're using a radius server with a shared secret. And then you will go and create a radius server, right, under AAA authentication. And here will be the wireless router, the IP address, okay, of the wireless router, and the key that's possible, right? And then the users and their passwords so they can authenticate before they get to the wireless um, network. So all the users will actually have to authenticate to the radius before they can actually get to it. Now I know what you're saying. Hey, well, hey, Laz, how are they going to authenticate? They're not connected. They're wireless. Well, within that signal that's going out, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to be sent to the radius server to authenticate, and then they'll have access to the network, and then they'll have access to all the networks. Because one thing that I tell everybody in the wireless network is, hey, remember, a wireless network is an extension of your LAN. But anyway, we're doing the CCNA, so. We don't have to worry about wireless. So here you got two different types of wireless. A very easy one and a little bit more intricate one because if you're actually doing this on a real server, you know, active directories involved, certificates and all that good stuff. So it can get very complex real quick. But you don't have to worry about it. CCNA doesn't require it. All right. I thought it was going to be quick. Maybe it wasn't. But now you know. All right, guys. I'll see you and gals. See you in the next lecture.